Welcome into Texans Today, everybody. I'm your host, Jeremy Chuggs, and coming up on today's program, looking at the latest Texans news and rumors from Minicamp. I'll let you know everything you need to know around those practices. Also, we have some quotes from yesterday and a couple from today from some of the Texans players. Some interesting ones. Maybe I eat a slice of humble pie. We'll get into that in the middle of today's program. And at the very end, Derek Stingley, is he getting disrespected? Absolutely disrespected by the media. I'll tell you what those fake news guys over there at PFF have to say about Derek Stingley. But first, a little performance review. I want to hear from you folks at home. If this is your first time watching, maybe wait till the end of today's video and let me know. Tell me something you like and dislike about this program, about Texans Today, the videos I make here. I know a lot of y'all here watch a ton of my videos and I appreciate every single one of my subscribers who also have their notifications turned on who watch all my videos but I want to get better as a host you know training camp preseason mini camp even OTAs this is when players take time to you know self-evaluate look at themselves and say how do I get better going into next season so that's what I want to do here at Texans today I want to be the best Texans channel on YouTube and I need your help I, I can't do this without y'all so let me know what do you like and what do you dislike about this show? So first, a little bit of news that came in late yesterday. The Texans, they released Marcus Haynes, somebody who was on the Broncos practice squad last year. You know, didn't really have a shot to make the roster, but they released him with an injury de designation. Looks like he wasn't physically ready to go for this year. Knew he wasn't going to make the roster, so they came to a settlement. He was released by the Houston Texans. Also, today at Texans minicamp, there were some Obviously, people in attendance, it's mandatory, so if you don't attend, you will get fined. So these guys, they were there, but they weren't suited up. They weren't practicing. They were more on the sidelines doing their own thing. It was Noah Brown, Andrew Beck, Laramie Tunsil, Titus Howard. They're all rehabbing injuries. And then also, later in the practice, Aaron Wilson gave us this. Also, D'Angelo Ross and safety MJ Stewart were not available today. We're not practicing. Another guy who wasn't practicing, but I know all Texans fans are super pumped, very excited to see him, at least out there, is Dylan Horton, the defensive end who the Texans selected out of TCU last year. He has been dealing with Hodgkin's lymphoma, recently went into remission and plans to try to come back this year. But, I mean, just an absolute true warrior, an absolute, you know, stand-up guy really battling through this, you know, cancer that he had and really coming out on the other side looking like he's a little bit stronger really hope we get to see him this season go down and like the video if show some love to dylan horton an absolute true warrior like i said i know all of texans fans everybody in the houston texans community is really rooting for this kid really want to see him back out on the field i mean even if he doesn't take a snap this season what he's already accomplished is absolutely amazing so go down and show some love to Dylan Horton, go down and hit that thumbs up icon. Now, let's get into some quotes from yesterday, a couple on today on the back end. But first, something one of the hottest storylines of this offseason with the Texans was Tank Dell and the incident that he found himself in in Florida. This is what he had to say to the media yesterday revolving around that incident. When it first happened, when I was in the hospital, that's the only thing I was asking. Am I going to be all right to play football? That was my main thing. Will I be okay to run and play football like I've been doing? Once they told me like it was just like a through and through, once they told me that, you'll be good. I was good. I was ready to go. And, I mean, everybody was extremely worried because there was not a lot of stuff coming out around the shooting that uh, Tank Dell was a victim in, in Florida. It was just that he was a part in it and he was okay. But good to hear that, you know, he came out on the other side of it. He was ended up being okay after – being an incident in that shooting in Florida. And, I mean, it kind of takes you into the mindset of Tank Dell and why I think a lot of Texans fans are super excited and super pumped that, obviously, he's okay. He's out practicing and that he's going to be one of the weapons for C.J. Stroud is his mindset is on football 100% of the time. I mean, find you somebody that loves you the way that Tank Dell loves football. This dude is there for the grind. He's there every single day. Absolutely, I mean, putting in work this whole offseason I can't wait to see him and CJ Stroud connect all throughout the 2024 season speaking of CJ Stroud he was talking about a wide receiver but not Tank Dell he was talking about John Mechie yesterday and this is what he had to say as y'all can see he's running some of the best routes I've ever seen his lateral quickness his stop and start he's been through a lot fighting cancer and fighting injury as you can see he's making plays he's showing up and he's showing out 
I'm excited for him to show his value that we've all known he has. He can now put it on the field. He's going to be pivotal and important to the football team. And, I mean, John Mechie has absolutely been putting on a clinic during OTAs and minicamp so far for this Texan squad. I mean, he looks really good. He looks the part of the former second rounder that he was out of the University of Alabama. And obviously, he's been putting in a lot of work with C.J. Stroud. We saw it, him and uh, C.J. Stroud, Stephon Diggs, and uh, Sketch working out this offseason. Also, we've seen him in other points working out with C.J. Stroud throughout this offseason. So I'm really excited to see what he can bring to the table. I know C.J. Stroud said this team has five number ones. And apparently one of those number ones, he believes, is John Mechie. And I've made some videos the past couple weeks saying John Mechie could be a cut candidate. You know, John Mechie could be a trade candidate for this team, which I, I still do believe in the right scenarios could happen. But, I mean, you can go ahead right now. I'll go ahead and say it. I was wrong. I think John Mechie now, especially – that you have the seal of approval of C.J. Stroud. I think he is a lock to make this roster. So go ahead, throw the tomatoes in the chat. Spam the tomato emoji. Just We can write tomato. Throw the tomatoes in the chat. I was wrong. I was wrong in thinking that, you know, John Mechie was going to be on the roster bubble because, as I've said in the past, it's, you know, the saying, happy wife, happy life. It's happy Stroud, happy crowd. And if you have the seal of approval from C.J. Stroud, you're most definitely making this team. So go ahead, throw the tomatoes in the chat. Look, pie on my face, I was wrong. John Mechie, probably going to make this roster at the end of the day. Another player that was talking about another player, Will Anderson, was talking on first round pick, or first overall pick for the Houston Texans in the second round, Kamari Laster. This is what he had to say about the Texans' corner. I've been amazed by him. He's electric. He's making plays left and right. And along with that, the Texans actually named Kamari Laster the Swarm Player of the day by Texans Today. Hey, that's the name of the show, Texans Today. Shout out to Aaron Wilson for shouting out the show, I guess. But Kamari Laster, a lot of Texans fans have been worried about, is he ready to start week one? Is he going to be the guy opposite of Derek Stingley? And if all these signs are pointing to it, I think that will be the case. I think Kamari Laster will be the starting outside corner opposite of Derek Stingley unless the Texans go out and make a move they have C.J. Henderson. They have Jeff Okuda, who could be some depth pieces. But I think at the end of the day, all Texans fans really want Kamari Lasseter to start week one. They want their first overall selection in this year's draft to get on the field and make an impact. So I think all of these things that we've he been hearing from OTA's minicamp, rookie minicamp for Kamari Lasseter is really, really encouraging for the Texans fan base and everybody who's rooting for this team. Now, coming up, talking about another corner and Derek Stingley and how he was disrespect absolutely disrespect by pff i'll get into that in just a moment but i know you all saw this photo yesterday i mean the folks in my office who were making fun of me about the texan secondary logo when the leaks came out about the helmet shame on you because these are the best uniforms in the entire nfl this season and the secondary logo looks absolutely clean if you want to get it right now they have it on t-shirts long sleeves Hoodies, sweaters, all available when you go to chatsports.com slash H-Town. That link is going to be in the comments and description of today's video. But, I mean, look at this. Perfect shirt to rock out whenever you're, like, out in the summer, going to maybe go, go grab a couple beers with the buddies. This is the shirt that you need to be wearing. Go to chatsports.com slash H-Town. Go check them all out today. Now, Stingley was disrespected by PFF, an absolute sham that they wrote this article. They said, you know, PFF went in and they graded all the cornerbacks going into 2024. They ranked them 1 to 32. Stingley had the fifth highest grade in PFF last season. And they ranked him at 27. They ranked him 27th overall heading into 2024. This is what they had to say in the article. The 2023 version of Stingley is much more of what we expected after he was selected third overall in the 2022 NFL Draft. He followed up a 49.9 grade in his rookie year with an 85.3 grade that ranked fifth at the position in 2023. If he plays like he did a season ago, he'll find himself in the top 10 rankings next year. But like I said, he had the fifth highest grade. How are you ranking him 27th? He's a young corner. He was injured his first year. He barely even played. His second year, he goes out and he balls out. 
and you're going to rank him 27th? I don't get the reasoning behind this PFF. I think this is just blatant disrespect. Let me know if you agree down in the comments. Is the NFL sleep on Derek Stingley? Are people undervaluing his talent and how good he can be? Because 27th is an absolute sham. Sham of a ranking. These are the top 10 corners they had going into 2024 by PFF. Number one, they had Sauce Gardner. Two, Trent McDovey. Three, Chardvarius Ward. Four, Pat Sertan. Five, Jalen Johnson. Then we have Jalen Ramsey, Jair Alexander, Kendall Fuller, Michael Carter the second, and Taron Johnson, which I'm not putting shade on any, any of these guys. The, all these corners are really good corners in the National Football League. But let's look at their number one guy, Sauce Gardner. Number one on their list, and let's look at the stats compared to Derek Stingley. Uh, yes, he has, you know, the advantage in tackles, but you don't really want your corner to have a lot of tackles. I mean, that's not a necessarily great stat for a corner to have. I mean, yes, helping in the run defense is good, but, I mean, tackles isn't the end-all, be-all. But when you look at the actual, you know, stats whenever it comes to covering wide receivers, 12 pass breakups to 11 advantage Derek Stingley. Five interceptions to zero advantage Derek Stingley. 51.2 completion percentage to 57.4 advantage Derek Stingley and a QB rating when targeted of 48.1 compared to 81.2 advantage Derek Stingley. Basically what I'm saying is Derek Stingley is going to go out there and prove a lot of these NFL media guys wrong. I mean PFF ranking him at 27th is just an absolute disrespect to this young man. He is one of the top 10 corners in the NFL going into 2024. And the fact that PFF had him ranked as the fifth highest guy last year and then ranking him at 27th makes no sense at all. Derek Stingley is a top 10 corner. He is a CB1, a lockdown guy, and he's going to prove it here in 2024. That's all I have for you on today's show, folks. If you want to continue the conversation, talk about how these NFL blog boys, the fake news media out there, thinks Derek Stingley is the 27th best corner. If you want to continue this dialogue, talk with me about Texans football, anything you want, go follow me on Twitter at Jeremy Chugs. And as always, hit that subscribe button for more Texans news and rumors content all year long. We are the fastest growing Texans channel on YouTube for a reason because we have great viewers just like you. You made it to the end of the video. Might as well hit that subscribe button right here to get daily Texans content.